Tabular fractures surgical approaches. In general, surgical approach to the stabulum depend on the location of the fracture, the type of the fracture, and complexity of the fracture. So what are the types of fractures approached posteriorly? Posterior wall fracture. A posterior column fracture. Posterior column and posterior wall fracture. And a posterior wall fracture with transverse fracture. The ilioinguinal approach is usually used for anterior wall fracture, anterior column fracture, for an associated anterior and posterior hemi transverse fracture, and for an associated both column fracture. The transverse fracture is usually approached by ilioinguinal approach if the fracture is high. However, in low fractures, you can approach that fracture posteriorly. The T fracture may need two approaches, an anterior and posterior approach. The extensile approach can be an extended iliofemoral approach or a triradiate approach. These extensile approaches are used for more complex injuries or older injuries. The extended iliofemoral may cause gluteal muscle necrosis. The entire gluteal mass, gluteus medius and minimus, can be hanging by the superior gluteal vessels pedicle. The extensile approaches in general will have more myositis ossificans. Over one third of them will get a severe type of myositis. You want to prevent that by low-dose radiation, 600 to 800 centigrade of radiation given within 72 hours of surgery, or you can give endocin for six weeks. That will decrease the severity of the myositis, but it may not prevent it. In general, most surgeons will do an anterior and posterior approach dual approach instead of the extensile iliofemoral approach. The triradiate approach, you can see the incisions. It is a triradiate trans-trochanteric approach. The ilioinguinal approach. The ilioinguinal approach is known to have a low incidence of myositis. Myositis is 10% in the posterior approach and 1% in the ilioinguinal approach. The ilioinguinal approach, you can approach the anterior column, anterior wall lesions, associated both column fractures, high transverse fractures, and the associated anterior and posterior hemitransverse fractures. There are three windows in the ilioinguinal approach. A medial window contain the spermatic cord and the ilioinguinal nerve. Failure to repair the abdominal muscles adequately in this area may lead to hernia. The second window is the external iliac vessels. This second window may carry the corona mortis. The external iliacs are the vessels that are seen in the anterior superior quadrant of the establum. Insertion of establer screws in this quadrant during a total hip replacement may injure the external iliac vessels. The third window, lateral window, contains the iliopsoas, the femoral nerve, and the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. 
These nerves can be injured during an ilioinguinal approach. The iliopectineal fascia lies between the middle window and the lateral window. You want to incise the iliopectineal fascia down to the eminence and off the pelvic brim. After that, you will be able to connect the true pelvis to the false pelvis. Got three problems that are important with the ilioinguinal approach. The first one, the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. The second one, you can develop a hernia if the repair of the anterior abdominal wall is not good. The third one is the corona mortis. What is the corona mortis? The corona mortis is a connection between the internal iliac branch, the obturator, and the external iliac or its branch, the inferior epigastric. Its location in the superior pubic ramus is variable. It's about 3 to 7 cm from the symphysis pupus. The corona mortis is susceptible to injury in pelvic trauma and pelvic surgery, especially during the ilioinguinal approach. The injury to the corona mortis may lead to significant hemorrhage, which may be difficult to control. Posterior approach is useful in displaced posterior fractures, such as posterior wall, posterior column, in associated fractures that has large posterior wall, and is also useful in some transverse fractures. If you combine the posterior approach with anterior incisions and with trochanteric osteotomy, then you can make that more extensile. The sliding trochanteric osteotomy improved visualization at the dome and the superior establum. The problem with the posterior approaches are the following. You cannot reach the anterior displaced fractures adequately and you may get injury to the sciatic nerve. When you do posterior approach to the establum, you need to bend the knee and extend the hip. You need to keep the knee bent all the time, especially during traction. Be aware that the sciatic nerve retractor will help you if you put the retractor in the proper location, which is the lesser sciatic notch, and the obturator internus will be a layer between the retractor and the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve will be posterior to the obturator internus, but remember it's also anterior to the periformis. Another risk to the posterior approach is damage to the blood supply of the femoral head. You need not to injure the capsule and leave a cuff of tissue about a centimeter to preserve the blood supply to the femoral head. When you put the screws, be aware of the danger zone of the establum. Be careful when you place screws in the danger zone of the establum. Rule out intraoperative penetration of the screws into the hip joint by taking multiple fluoroscopy views and direct visualization inside the joint. Use hook plates or buttress plates to support comminuted fracture of the posterior wall. You need to elevate and probably graft the marginal impaction. It is known that posterior approach to the hip will have more myositis than the ilioinguinal approach. Establer surgical approaches may be complicated by the moral lavale lesion. Morel lavale lesion must often occur in the peritrochanteric region resulting from shearing forces applied to the skin. It occurs deep to the subcutaneous tissue. In fact, it is a closed soft tissue degloving injury. 
Up to 30% of the operative sites may be colonized at the time of surgery. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful. I tried to present the most important points in surgical approaches of the establishment.